Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Scott here to introduce to you our winter landscape drawing. Um, I've already pre-drawn it out so you can have an idea. This is what we are shooting for today and it's inspired by this picture that I um, added also to Canvas for you to see. So to get started, I always like you to still write your name on the back um, even though you're at home. So we all still have the habit of doing that when we come back. I'm just going to make up a class code. And um, just make sure that you have a pencil, an eraser, and then I'm going to talk to you for a quick second about some options for when we trace today. Um, if you have a brand new Sharpie, it will have a nice, um, a nice pointy tip to it that could work for this project. But if your Sharpie is dull and more rounded at the tip, then I would not choose um, this Sharpie that's called a fine point. Um, if you have an ultra fine point Sharpie or something like it that has permanent ink, it has a little bit of a thinner tip to it. So that would be ideal. And um, even you can use just your basic ballpoint black pen that works well. Um, you may have to go over your lines a little bit more, but this is doable too because it will um, it will not smear when we um, if the watercolor were to touch it, which you can do the watercolor in this project without it even touching the black ink. So um, any type of thin tip black utensil should work well for this. So you're going to need one of those. Um, okay, so to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to map out drawing this basic um, top contour. I like to call this the contour because it's kind of the edge of the mountains. We're going to draw that first. So what I'm going to have you do is come down with your finger to where you think the middle is and then come down just a little bit farther and move out to the edge. Okay, and when we're drawing the mountains, instead of using just a straight line, we're gonna kind of make it a little bit bumpy. And um, really the most important thing is to make the mountain tops different heights so that it doesn't look exactly uniform um, so that um, it looks natural like nature is. All right, so you're gonna draw something like that. And then we're gonna go back in and secondly, we're gonna add these shaded areas that will look help the mountain to look 3D. So what we're going to do next then is we're gonna come up to the, to the um, I'm sorry, to the actually where these two mountains meet. And we're gonna draw um, also a kind of a wiggly line that just trails down. And I'm gonna bring it down a little bit lower than where I started. Then I'm gonna to go to the tip of the mountain and I'm gonna do, um, remember just kind of keep your bumpiness to it and I'm gonna draw a line that connects there. Okay, then we're gonna leave this side. We're gonna come back over here to where these two mountains connected and we're gonna draw um, this mountain. This makes it look like this is coming, um, this is in the front so that we have a little bit of overlapping. Um, and then the tip of this mountain is where you'll start and you'll just follow this down to meet here so that this creates like a valley. Then you'll come back, come over to this side and basically keep following in the same pattern. Um, I'm gonna come a little bit lower with this one and add that on there. And I'm not liking how this is not as bumpy. It's kind of too straight for me. So I'm gonna fix that. All right. Um, then I'm going to go, there's no place to add the first line of the valley on this side, but we can add the line so that we can create a shaded area. So go ahead and just add that in on the side. Okay, then we're going to create a second layer of mountains a little bit lower on our page. So you should have um, some space here left for those. And we're going to do the same thing to start out with. Um, we're going to make these a little less extreme, so a little less high, a um, little less um, extreme in their difference down here, um, but we still want to be able to tell that some are smaller than others. And then again, we're going to come down and draw in where the valley comes in and the tip of this mountain, how it connects. We're going to do that for each one. 
So we can see that depth and that overlapping eventually. Okay. This kind of just trails off into white snow. So we're not gonna worry about that. All right, so next we're going to work on adding our trees. Um, our trees are in the very foreground of the picture. Um, and then since this, this entire landscape is pretty far away, the trees are pretty far um, in the distance here. So we're gonna make them rather small, but we do wanna show a difference in the size of those as well. And you can create little groups of three, two, four, or you can do um, like in this picture, it just has one sort of one group of them. Um, and the basic way you're going to do that is to draw your line here um, to show where the middle will be. And then you're gonna draw some slightly angled marks coming down and they're gonna grow in length as you get toward the bottom. And they're also gonna get a little bit flatter as you get toward the bottom. And if they get too long at the top, you can always shape them a little bit with your eraser. So you're gonna put in some of those. And these will fill in with, um, with your marker, so it, they won't look quite so scraggly. You'll be able to get a little more fullness when you um, trace them with your marker. And then I think I'm just gonna add one big guy over here, kind of wide at the bottom. Okay, so just as long as you have those mapped out. They may look a little different when we trace them. And then lastly, you're gonna come up to the top and add the moon. And so remember to draw light at first, draw light till you get it right. And kind of get your circle up there and then you can, when you get it the way you want it, you can trace it a little bit darker and erase some of your sketchy lines. And if, if you don't feel really successful at drawing a circle on your own that looks very even, you can practice on the back of your paper. You could also find something around your house that is about that size and trace it there, whatever um, works for you. So that is the first step is the drawing step. And I will create a second video for the um, adding the pen and ink lines.